वेलकम 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 एवरी वन टू अ ब्रांड न्यू शो एवरी वन सेंग लेट 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 वेल वी आर अ लेट बाय वन मिनट बट लुक एट द पर्सन हुम वी हैव विथ अस टूडे द वन एंड ओनली सूर्या गांगुली सूर्या वेलकम टू द शो थैंक सागर थैंक यू सो मच वेल गाइज आई हैव टू टेल यू दैट गेटिंग सूर्या ऑन द शो वॉज नॉट एट ऑल ईजी especially because he has a big show coming up with vishy anand so he is meticulously preparing for it uh which is going to happen this saturday but wonderful to to have you surya here thank you thank you yeah i'm i'm quite excited with uh, with the channel that i'm launching and i just um, understood that how difficult it is uh, you know to learn all this new software and everything for me playing chess and uh, preparing chess is much easier than uh, uh, dealing with this technical things <laughs> yeah that is true that is true uh, you are uh, one of the biggest opening experts in the world of uh, of chess and uh, today's topic is when you actually forgot your openings yeah uh, you'll be surprised to know that actually happens pretty often and uh, not only with me i mean i have seen uh, anand number of times not just once number of times uh, even during world championship matches when he was forgetting his preparation so this is nothing uh, abnormal so that that's why when you asked me to make a show on uh, opening i thought this could be a nice topic when people actually forget their opening yeah which is very natural very common so i, I because also you yeah. you know what like when you when you play very um, you when you have a very narrow repertoire and it's not not even deep enough then it's easy to remember but when you play a lot of lines and uh, you have uh, a lot of analysis then it's very easy to uh, you know forget or mix up yeah yeah well in the chat people are saying ganguly op uh, and and surya should know this language now that he is becoming a streamer op means yeah, overpowered yeah. basically they are welcoming you yeah like surya is here I I I learned it like 10 days back. <laughs> yeah, 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 so many yeah. new things to learn in this lockdown. Yeah. Uh yeah. there's one user who says, you know, if I have to choose my second favorite player, it has to be Surya because his first favorite player is Bobby Fischer. Oh my god, that's a bit too much. <laughs> <laughs> He is talking about chess, right? <laughs> Definitely. I hope okay. so. I hope so. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So guys, uh, all those who are in the chat, you know, people are joining in. Please go into the description and subscribe to Surya's channel, YouTube channel which he's launched uh, because this Saturday he's going to have an amazing show with none other than Vishy Anand. And imagine the guy who's won 5 world titles and the guy who helped him to win 3 world titles, they're going to discuss about chess. it can't get better than that yeah so yeah so just to be clear sagar uh, we uh, we will be having that is minimum uh, minimum four shows with anand wow on different topics okay. uh, it could be more but uh, i can assure like there will be four episodes so uh, i hope it is going to be very interesting hmm. and i'm still a bit nervous you know like if i'll be able to fix the camera and everything but uh, other than that uh, the chess part and question part i'm pretty confident wonderful wonderful i i'm sure it will be amazing by the way the moderators of the group uh, sumit great job is put in the link so guys that's his channel surya ganguly is the youtube channel uh, and uh, there will you know what surya has planned is not just anand but after that even getting some other big names in the world of chess yes yeah yeah for sure i mean mostly second episode uh, hari will be there wow. anish has confirmed wow. uh, we'll get I'll get humpy also, and uh, I'll I'll I will try as many players as I can get, and uh, also there will be uh, some shows where I'm doing solo, uh, you know, going through some of my games or uh, giving some lecture on some topics, and for my Bengali friends out there, there will be a couple of uh, Bengali shows also. So it will be sort of mix mix. I, Everything will be mixed. I have I have one thing uh, which is like where were you all these years? You know, we needed you you to to stream and and now you've begun finally. It's it's great news. I have always held uh, Surya in the highest of regards when it comes to his chess commentary, his uh, chess knowledge, the way he teaches, and so his his YouTube channel is a must visit for everyone here. <clears throat> Thank you. Great. 
uh, and uh, Surya, one more thing we are doing today is we are raising funds for the Amphan uh, cyclone, which was very, very devastating in West Bengal. A uh, lot of people lost their lives, their livelihood so much. So um, we, we are going to ask people to contribute. There is, you see here, there is the Google Pay ID. So you can just contribute to that link. And if you want to play in the Simul, and also in the tournament that we have, then the links are in the description. So please uh, play there. <clears throat> so we are, we are contributing money to the uh, f to an organization yeah. called Cry, uh, and uh, mm -hmm. hopefully child child child's right and you, you yes yeah? yes yeah. yes. Uh, by the way, someone said Surya got sixty subscribers after this. Well. I, I would hope that after this oh. stream ends, he reaches 1000 subscribers. This is the aim. If he can reach 1000 subscribers, wow. this, this stream would be successful. Okay, guys. So <laughs> please, please do this for uh, Chess Base India and uh, for Surya. Okay. Uh, Surya. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> so we are here, you know, uh, first of all, this is an opening series, which is ongoing. Uh, we have 20 lectures done, but this time Surya has come in and he's going to show us uh, something very unique uh, and before he explains I want to introduce him because you know there might be one or two people in the chat who might not know him uh, hundred percent so I want to introduce him for that for them uh, Surya so six-time national champion Asian champion Arjuna award winner uh, three times second of Vishy Anand when he won the world championship matches. Winner of Belt and Road Championship just last year, the biggest prize money open event ever in 2019. I think I'm missing a lot, you know, you have achieved so much, but this is, this is good enough. Yes, Surya. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, thanks, thanks for not mentioning that I lost to you in badminton match. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if if you, you know, we were playing once some one minute blitz and I was rook up and then you beat me. So if you promise me not, you promise that you wouldn't mention that. So I wouldn't mention the badminton part. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so guys, it's a great honor to have Surya on this show and we'll get straight into the chess now. Uh, so what are we going to see Surya today? So I thought I'll show two games. Um where I forgot uh, my opening preparation uh, very quickly. And uh, yeah, uh, and uh, even after forgetting, I was somehow immediately within a few moves, I got a very good position. So I just want to pinpoint that sometimes if you forget opening, it's, it's no big deal. You have to just have faith in your uh, uh, own judgment and calculation, analytical power. Uh, what is the most... Uh, uh, annoying thing during a game that can happen to a player is you are sort of half remembering your uh, notes and preparation and half calculating. This is never good. Either you like fully calculate or you are fully confident that, yeah, this is what I saw, this is what I will play. Whenever there is this uh, hesitation that you are kind of uh, part of you is thinking, yeah, something like this I saw uh, and you play that move, uh, then usually it goes wrong. So my first game is uh, from 2006. I was uh, 2,500 something and I was playing with uh, Isma Gambetov. He's a, he was a 2,400 player back then. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was a Berlin opening. Okay. So uh, let's go through the game. But uh, I would just like to tell the viewers that even the best in the business forget their openings. And when you forget your openings, it's not like the end of the show you know like uh, so what you're going to learn is how a top player approaches these situations when he just can't remember his analysis so let's go uh, surya is white he goes e4 his favorite move e5 knight f3 knight c6 and now uh, the ruy lopez opponent goes knight f6 <coughs> and uh, were you expecting this surya from isma gambet yeah so uh yeah, he, he, he could play Berlin. He was very, uh, I think this was part of his repertoire. And the story starts with, uh, it goes back to 2004. 
Okay. When uh, I was uh, paired against uh, in in World Cup, I was uh, playing against uh, Peter Heine Nielsen. Uh, you know who, who was uh, Anand seconds and now Carlson's coach. So I was paired uh, against him, and he was playing Berlin. And my childhood friend, my very good friend Sandeep Anchanda, came up with a very interesting idea mm-hmm. in Berlin defense, which was brand new back then. And uh, we prepared that in the match. I never got a chance because he never played Berlin. This particular idea that I played in this game, I think I have played like seven games. uh and i won six games and there was only one draw uh which was uh, against ivanchuk really uh, yeah yeah uh, so but uh, the entire world struggles to win against the berlin and and here you are crushing it well but this is also back in 2004 to 2007 i think i played this line and uh, much weaker engines of course and uh you know like everything was uh, pretty new and the, the entire concept was uh, completely new and i have to give credit to sandeepan for this uh, because he was the guy who found this idea and then we worked a lot he also played a few games i also remember in 2004 uh, kalvi olympiad in a very crucial game i played this uh, against uh, in in uh, when we were playing against netherlands anand was also playing on top board in, uh, against van veli okay and and uh, on third board uh, i used the similar uh, same idea which happened in this game and during that game i still remember my opponent played something which sandeepan did not see and i was trying to find sandeepan in the gallery where he is you know just to give him a look that what did you do you didn't see this move mm. but anyway i won i won that important game also so yeah the idea is um, you can go ahead like sure. castle 94 yeah i i must tell also the viewers that sandeepan is a very very creative thinker on the board in fact uh, there's this Uh, opening in the nimzo indian which is now becoming very popular with uh, e3 followed by bishop d2 or straight away bishop d2 no 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 straight bishop d2 is not playing anymore it's e3 and bishop d2 e3 and if you play castles then bishop d2 and this is somehow what he he actually would you say he popularized this line uh, now it's being played a lot i mean this line is uh, pretty old but uh, when you see a grandmaster played approximately 46 games in <laughs> this particular position then there is nothing else to say yeah 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 so sandeepan uh, good to be in touch with him for new ideas uh, yeah. a- and uh, he took you played d4 which is the main line and now knight d6 which is all well known people now take on c6 take here and then they go into this end game which is so uh, well right right yeah so uh, the I, sandeepan's idea was to play bishop a4 okay I, 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 i must tell you i have never seen this move actually uh, you're joking really i have not because uh, no one plays it anymore i have never seen a yeah. recent game yeah yeah that's true that's true but i think uh, immediately after we started there were a few games uh, for sure sutski played and uh, there was some game against levon i think there were there were some followers but okay of course now if you look start looking at with the new engines everything is uh, solved and it's definitely not a critical line okay but uh, it solved my purpose i got 6 and a half out of 7 so which is pretty decent <laughs> pretty <laughs> decent <laughs> yeah. yeah so we 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 checked here ed4 e4 and bishop e7 these are the three main moves we saw uh, in in this game it was uh, e takes d4 So C3, this is the idea, giving the second pawn, and so far nobody uh, tried to take D3 with me. Like all the seven games I played, even yeah D3 the idea is okay. You play Knight C3, and then maybe you can draw some arrow. Like you want to play Knight D5, Bishop F4, Rook E1, Rook C1. Uh, the compensation lies on the fact that uh, Black C8 Bishop and uh, D6 Knight is like a bit awkward, yeah. So. we get some kind of compensation but again uh, let me emphasize on this that this entire line is not very sound mm. uh, and after c3 i played with ivanchuk in uh, canada edmonton he played d3 which is also uh, fine the idea of d3 is not to allow white to get his knight to c3 All right so in this game he played bishop e7 which was part of our preparation also mm-hmm. cd4 I mean, you you do not want to isolate your pawn as like that, but this is going to come forward and create lot of problems, yeah. 
well uh the idea is like okay uh, if i if i is going to make another uh, let's say three four moves it will be knight c3 knight d5 bishop f4 rook e1 rook c1 ah okay so basically clearing the c3 square was the main idea correct and uh, the argument is that this with the knight on d6 uh black is unable to develop the bishop on c8 so and if black plays something like b6 bishop b7 then you get your knight c3 knight d5 bishop f4 uh yeah as uh, yeah so that so that is the plan so my opponent played castle and once again this is uh, back in those days where when we were using uh, i think deep junior and fritz yeah so so uh it was very important that in this particular position i play bishop c2 okay and uh, the idea is you are stopping knight f5 yeah and you want to keep that knight there so that the bishop doesn't develop exactly and then you want to play knight c3 knight d5 so this was our preparation and uh, which i forgot but do you think uh, this makes any sense here or not yeah, really yeah th this was our main line and then we wanted to go bishop b3 and then so we get this f4. knight away yeah then we yeah also now our bishop will be on b3 instead of a4 so we get a little bit uh, some kind of advantage yeah sure. some improvement but again uh, this is all back in 2006 engine uh, as it turns out uh, what i played uh, back then is actually approved by today's engine <laughs> so knight so knight c3 is the strongest move uh, the only thing is uh, during that time we thought knight c3 is not precise because I of it this move exactly yes. exactly now that you are not so, controlling f5 he goes here exactly and now if you play bishop c2 let's say in this position he plays b5 and if you can remove this knight from f5 then it is fantastic but how to do this if you play g4 he has always knight h4 and there is no way you are going to attack this knight yeah it's like uh, white is a pawn down and has the worst position yeah i mean so, no compensation exactly so so when he played knight f5 my first thing was i mean how can i do this why why i am being so uh, why i had to play so quickly you know like i was supposed to stop this knight f5 and this is the point i want to uh, focus on that uh, when we forget preparation if you want to curse yourself okay go ahead and do it for you know like uh, 30 seconds 1 minute whatever you feel right but then get rid of it yeah and then look at the position with fresh mind so at this point i realized that yeah okay i completely missed it up now what to do i have to somehow come up with an idea in order to prove my compensation Wonderful. so i found an inter interesting way i played d5 here no now i want to tell that d5 is an is is a move that you don't want to make yeah because your knight was supposed to be on d5 yeah So I'm taking away that square. So he plays knight b8. Does this move make any sense now, knight to d5, or it's just uh... it it makes perfect sense? But uh, I was not very happy about this d6 and bishop e6. Like again, white still has compensation, but uh, the main compensation which uh, I was aiming for, that is restricting the bishop yeah. on c8, that is kind of uh, not uh, legitimate anymore. The bishop is out. Correct. Correct. So you decided to play d5, and I think a very important advice to everyone here is that if you forget your analysis, just curse yourself for a few seconds. Like, oh, I should have remembered stuff, but then you get into your groove and don't don't think about it anymore. Think about the new position on the board. Yeah, just just one correction. I'm not saying that you should curse, but okay, if you cannot help, then it. you know get rid of it ideal is if you don't do yeah. anything yeah just look at the position with a fresh mind do you know any player who would be like this who will be like ah okay i forgot my preparation doesn't matter i think everyone will feel a bit right yeah yeah there there will be a little bit of you know uh, some kind of emotional uh, up down will be there sure. like when you forget your preparation yeah so given so, uh, night game only only logical move yeah and now if i play bishop c2 again it doesn't help he will play d6 it's still some kind of compensation but uh, i was not very sure i mean that knight on f5 is not so bad actually he can even play g6 you know bishop f6 he he will slowly uh, 
his thesis will slowly come out right so anyway my interesting idea was after knight b8 i played b6 ah you sacrificed another pawn <laughs> just yeah. just to keep this guy in exactly wow exactly so so if bishop d6 then i have bishop c2 so he must take knight into d6 yeah and then this knight is just misplaced so uh, he took not, 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 not only misplaced the thing is after knight e7 there is bishop h7 check so we might be uh, yeah check so, take and game over yeah like very strong yeah game. yeah 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 this is mate so anyway he played knight d6 and now objectively i think i should have started with knight d5 but bishop c2 is also not bad what i played so uh, this is very interesting moment like uh, i achieved what i wanted to achieve that is i stop knight f5 i am two pawns down now mm. uh, but i am simply arguing that uh, the c8 bishop is not coming into play and i have some threats and that is let's say if i am able to play knight d5 knight e7 and then the thematic bishop h7 is always in the air yeah so uh, believe it or not here uh, i think for an experienced player this move is very normal but for not so experienced player uh, the correct move is not very easy to get uh, black, i think yeah? and for black yeah Sh should we ask the viewers about this or you think it's uh... yeah, sure sure we can ask okay so guys uh, although ganguly was uh, white here he is asking you what is the best move for black black is two pawns up but can he hold his position together so while you are thinking I want to make an appeal to all the new viewers who have come here. You see, there is the link in the description of Ganguly's channel, uh, YouTube channel, uh, which is just launched recently, and he's now up to 400 plus subscribers. We need to make it 1,000. Please subscribe oh. and moderators, please do put the link in the chat so that people can click on it. <clears throat> okay, we have uh, Surya. We have one youngster who's very talented. Uh, his name mm -hmm. is Ilam Parthi, uh, and oh. he has suggested the move knight e8. Yeah, uh, that is what was played in the game. Okay. And you know what happened uh, when he played knight e8? Just put the position knight e8. Uh huh. I I vividly remember uh, the emotions, the thought I had during the game. So when my opponent played knight d8, this was happening in Delhi, first not open. I thought now it does not matter whether I win a game or uh, I make a draw. When I go back to my room, I will open the chess base. I will save this position. I'll take a photo of it. Look at black position. <laughs> Look at this. And and he's he's made twelve moves, yeah. And everything. He has made twelve moves. <laughs> so I was so happy when he played knight e8. I'm like, that's it, yeah. This is the photo I want to have. I, this is the image that never that will never go from my, uh, from my from my mind memory. Is it too much to ask for something like this? uh sorry not uh oh my god oh my god <laughs> okay i was just trying too much <laughs> <laughs> but yeah this so, is good enough so no, yeah 98 is a very uh, in a way very normal move because you want to get your uh, chop out but yeah go back to the previous move yeah i just want to mention that uh, pranav datta nihilesh Bharat Dev, Chess Always, Turplai, Go Parata. A lot of people suggested the move Knight E8. I don't know if it's the best move, but many people did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sagar, what is your move, by the way? Uh, <laughs> I I didn't <laughs> think. You know, I was like seeing how many people. But let me think. Yeah, like Rookie One. Maybe. Ah, uh, sorry. Ah, uh, you are going to go Rookie One. I I'm thinking Knight E8 makes sense. Also, uh, putting it on F6. Knight c6 would be the natural way to continue. Yeah. So the, the so the most uh, count. Uh, in if you look at it in a way, it's a very counterintuitive move. But if you look at it in a different way, it's the most natural move yeah, in the position. Yeah. I think c six. C six. Ah. Okay. You just take away the square uh, knight d5, and your next two moves is knight e8 and d5. Okay. So this move has been suggested by Chess Always, uh, Siddhan Shrimali, Ryan Rajesh. Nice, nice. We we have some strong players, you know, and and we have more uh, like Vatsal Shah, 
So good guys, right. happy and and yeah, everyone saying we just learned the Karo Khan, so C six is natural. Yeah. So he played knight e eight. Yeah. Which is uh, so C six is to stop knight d five basically. Knight d five. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. It's very important. Uh, so knight e eight again. I probably uh, should have started with uh, knight d five here. Yes. And uh, yeah, I played rook e one. And once again, C six is the move. Yeah. Uh, the reason is uh, now rook e7 is not a threat uh, because you are missing knight d5. So this will never work because you have to stop knight f6 also. Yeah, and at the end uh, the at knight the, comes. There's, no, also there's queen e1 mate. So both you have to take care. Yeah. Sorry for that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so c6. Yeah, c6 is the move, and probably I can play queen d3 or uh, yeah, maybe queen d3 or something like this. Yeah, some people are asking that. Do you think uh, a move like f5 makes sense here uh, also? Like, or this just looks too weakening, right? Yeah, the thing is, I'll play knight d5, and then it's not very easy to develop. Like knight d5, rook e1, bishop f4. Not very easy for uh, black to develop uh, his pieces. Yeah, yeah. So knight e8, rook e1. And now he made a very bad move, uh, which is in a way uh, natural. But uh, again, it's not important that uh, your black black played knight c6 here. It's not important that black's knight should come to c6. It's more important that white's knight d5 should have been stopped. Yes, absolutely. This is a very important threat. Yeah. So now I play knight d5. And now there is a very serious threat. Okay. Let's say if you make a move, uh, let's say b6 for instance, just to show. Yeah. B b b. Yeah. So now I don't know which order. Okay, take bishop into h7 first. No, no, no. Bishop into h7. King h7. Now take rook into e7. Ah, you want to take with the rook? Yes. You take because you need. Ah, you need the knight to control d5. Yeah. Then knight g5 check, and subsequently queen h5. Brilliant. So so there was this threat hanging. So instead of b6, probably he could have played d6. I still have compensation in various ways. Queen d3 is one of them. The But, same, uh, same line doesn't work at the end because bishop f5 comes, yeah, to defend this. That's true. That's true. That's true. Okay, yeah. Okay. So, so just for the viewers, uh, if you go bishop h7, take rook e7, knight e7, knight g5, king here, queen h5, then this saves the day for black. Yeah. <clears throat> so he he played g6. Yeah. I think after this it is lost basically. So I played uh, bishop h6, knight g7, and now rook e7. Oh, Surya, you should you should let us play such crunchy moves. You know, like uh, what a what a sack. Okay, knight takes. Yeah, and now the most obvious thing to do is give knight f6 check. Yeah. King h8, and play knight g5. This looks devastating, but uh, very. Uh, it looks very scary. But black has knight e f five, and suddenly black is escaping. Yeah. There is no no so, way to defend both. Uh, like if, yeah, if you yeah, it sort of plays out. Then he takes on f six. Yeah. yeah. So also when you are attacking, it's kind of important that you have uh, control, yeah. Not not to get excited. Whether the position is uh, good for you, bad for you, any emotions during the game is not good. Right. So bishop g5 here. So now, yeah. Now if he plays f6, then I have bishop f6, and I'm just uh, getting everything. Yes. Rook rook f6, knight f6, king h8, and then knight g5, or yeah, probably knight g5 is devastating. So he had to play rook e8 instead. Knight f6 check. King h8. And now again, very obvious move is knight e5. But then rook f8, and it's not clear what this knight is doing on e5. Yeah, it's going to be kicked back with d6. Yeah. So. <clears throat> so after king h8. Um, Yeah. Now basically, the, there is just only one piece missing. That's the queen. Yeah. How to get the queen into the game? Yeah. Yes. So okay. queen d4. I'm threatening queen h4 here. 
and here i was slightly upset after seeing his move because i was so badly hoping that he will play knight g f5 okay let let's think how to checkmate this over here mhm mm mhm mm okay guys right to move and checkmate the opponent i'm also thinking with you guys this is like training for me usually like i am just showing you stuff but today we have like the real teacher here who who's who's testing us um there are probably more than one ways to win here but uh, the one which i had in mind is uh, undoubtedly the prettiest uh, the prettiest yeah and most direct okay okay pushkar dhume thank you for your super chat uh, and thanks for trying karo khan guys what do you play here as white uh, okay one answer is Ooh wow what a mate yeah like i saw one of the answers and i was uh, very much impressed uh, let me get a few more here uh, bishop f5 okay that doesn't look great probably also winning someone said bishop f5 knight f5 knight e8 wins yeah i think uh, no no that, that 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 is not clear I mean, yeah, it wins, but not the, but definitely not the best way. Yeah. So the right move, I, I mean, the move which is being suggested by uh, by Ilam Parthi is knight g4. Yeah, absolutely. Takes. Check. Mm -hmm. Here. Check. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. So this, so, so, so this is what I was hoping for, and it's important Ooh. that uh, that. Uh, Ooh, that I, after knight f3 i have gf3 yeah it's also important that uh, otherwise he could deflect my knight what a so, beautiful position surya this is amazing yeah but the guy didn't play this and i was not very happy about it so he played rook f8 okay played rook f8 okay and uh, i was unable to sacrifice the queen and i know this position wins in a pretty much uh, in many ways but i found a again a bit direct and uh, concrete solution knight takes h7 yes to take so check king g8 is forced i take bishop into e7 queen e8 is forced play knight g5 betting mate so knight h5 is forced oh Oh you after all yeah. did get to uh, sack your queen. Yeah yeah. <laughs> I got it, yeah. Yeah queen takes h5 and I think he resigned here like g h5 and queen bishop f6 is important. Ah okay. Yeah this is an important yeah. move by because if you go here then after king g7 maybe there is no way to mate him. Yeah then I am probably lost yeah. But uh, but this is so amazing that in one of the lines like uh, this one here there is no way to defend h7 with the knight taking and in this ah, line true. uh there is no way to stop bishop coming yeah that's true that's true and both both mates were on h7 this i didn't think about yeah true brilliant chess i think guys this is really one of the most special games i have seen and that too after surya forgot his opening preparation how was your feeling after the game uh, after the game i was naturally very happy and uh, those um uh, this tournament there was another absolute brilliant game which i'm pretty sure i'll show in one of the shows that is sandeepan versus himanshu sharma those who have not seen this game i st strongly recommend it okay so it, it was in the, it was in the same tournament sandeepan uh, himanshu sharma uh and this was at the parshwana mm -hmm. delhi open in 2006 2006 I don't think it was on the same round but it will be like uh, more or less similar. Fantastic. Okay. I can actually actually recommend you like if you're doing one show you can show the Sandeepan's game and the Stenis game where Stenis goes you know this rook e7 check rook f7 check rook e7 check. Ah yeah yeah yeah. The, the thing is theme is similar. Okay, I would love to get Sandeepan on the show if he is has some time and he would show this game. But thanks for uh, recommending. 
best of luck you can book him for 2050 <laughs> yeah i remember i was in netherlands and uh, he had won the tour uh, no i was in poland and he had won a previous event and i wanted to interview him and uh, we had i had to talk to him uh, so many times and convince him but i did it you know i managed it one interview on chess biz india i had yeah. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> okay, guys, before we go to the second game of Surya, a very important announcement for all those joining in. Surya has just launched his uh, YouTube channel and it is named Surya Ganguly. He's going to have Vishy Anand joining in uh, on Saturday at 8 o'clock. Is it right? Oh, 9 o'clock. Ah, 9, 9 p.m. At 9 p.m. and uh, it will be amazing. And Surya says it won't be just one show, but there will be four shows with the world champ, five-time world champion. Uh, so please subscribe to his channel uh, and um, <clears throat> also please contribute to this Amphan relief uh, that we are the cyclone which has hit West Bengal and created so much devastation. Mm -hmm. Here's the link up there. If you can contribute to it, uh, would be great. Okay, Surya. So, shall we go to the next one? Sure. What's the story behind this one? Very recent game. Yeah, this is from... Uh, is this my last tournament that I played? Oh, no, I played some Bundesliga also. Yeah. So, this is from last uh, vacancy. Okay. And um, I think until penalty met round, I still had some chance to win the tournament. If I would beat Elianov, I would still have a critical chance to win the tournament. But uh, after a loss in penalty match round, I did not have any chance. And um, I sort of decided not to prepare at all for the last game. Uh, this is something my coach Vishnu tries to convince me to do anyway for every game. But uh, uh, somehow that does not happen very often. So, so your coach Actually, tells you don't prepare for any game? Mostly, <laughs> yeah, mostly it's like, yeah, just go and play. So, okay. So, I, I think Vishnu is usually very happy when I'm forgetting lines. Uh, he, he probably feels uh, better. When I'm just uh, memorizing things and playing, I don't think it impresses him anyway. Right, right. So, I, I know him, yeah. He is uh, like, uh, nat he wants things to flow uh, out from you, like the chest should flow out of you. Yeah. Uh, this this particular game has got uh, many interesting stories. Actually, it's uh, in in vacancy. Uh, most of the games I think that I won. Uh, yeah, I, I almost forgot openings. Uh, yeah, against Dinara I forgot opening. Against uh, this Anton I completely forgot what I was supposed to play. And uh, surprisingly, things turned out to be pretty well. I'm not saying everybody should forget, <laughs> but. <laughs> so so. Uh, but uh, it has got usually it has got not much connection, like. Uh, whatever happens in the opening year. Yeah, yeah. Not connections. Yeah. We we have a very strong viewer, Nuber Shah Sheikh, who is an IM with two GM norms who's watching this and has asked you, is this the most beautiful game you have ever played, the previous one against Isma Gambetto? Oh, come on, definitely not. I mean, that was... Uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, it was rather uh, much easy, you know, like uh, yeah. the moves are not that difficult to find. I mean, any day my game with, let's say, Mareko Sandro or Yu Yangi, those are much more difficult. Yeah. yeah. And for me, best game is also where, uh, not only of aesthetic beauty, but where you have to, you know, like, find some unique idea where there is some effort. I think the previous game was very, like, I didn't have to make any uh, not so obvious move. It was, it was pretty simple. Right. Yeah, uh, I think it also depends that, uh, you know, a player of Surya's stature who, who is so good at calculation would definitely love a game where he has to put his brain to work. And I think his game against Mareko Sandro, uh, which we have published on our channel, is worth viewing where Surya himself analyzes it. So don't miss that. So, uh, Surya, going to this game, uh, you're playing against Anton Smirno, who's a very young, talented player from Australia. Yeah, I played with Anton a couple of times actually when I was playing all these tournaments in Australia. So I, I know him pretty well when he was, you know, trying to make his norms. He's a very, very strong player and uh, he has got a very broad repertoire. So 
Uh, there is one thing. Eh? Usually, I'm very happy when I'm playing with someone where I don't know what that person is going to play. Okay. Uh, let's say if I'm playing, uh, you know, Evan Chuk or uh, uh, any guy, yes, yeah? I'm Shankland or Swidler. Uh, Sato- Swidler, you youngy. So when I cannot predict uh, when what they will play, I am usually very happy because that means I'll simply not turn on my laptop. So so tell me one thing: if you know someone is anyway pre- playing one line but not preparing works for you well, why don't you not prepare? Like why don't you just enjoy? I hope Vishnu is not uh, seeing this show. I have no answer for this. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah let's let's avoid this <laughs> okay okay N- not getting into this but but i i remember that uh, you are you are now uh, trying to sort of implement this much more yeah in your games to to prepare less to be more fresh for the battle well the the thing is actually now suddenly i remember that probably i should have included one more thing that it is not always uh, i am showing the games where it turned you know good for me but i for instance right now i remember that uh, once against you you youngi in one of uh, in in some in indonesia tournament he played scott and he played a line which uh, he played a novelty which was found by me for anantopal of match and we did not play this because there were many refutation from black side and i remember i was working like for one week in this one particular line okay and it is the same novelty you youngi played with me Uh, against me in uh, indonesia huh. and now i could not remember the four different solution we had for that novelty and the way i played i lost in like 16 moves oh i was oh my god so the only thing that i remember was a blunder so that was a precise example where you are sort of half calculating and half remembering and it can get really it backfire because you are not you are not thinking and you are thinking like ah yeah bishop b4 i saw somewhere okay let's play bishop b4 and then <laughs> i i so yeah, yeah. i have to break yeah. you gm vishnu prasanna is in the chat and he says good oh question sagar answers are tough <laughs> 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 yeah so with you young guy lost in like 16 moves and this also happened uh, just before that tournament i think i was playing somewhere in lisingen uh, i was playing with uh, someone uh, and i lost in like uh, 19 moves and after losing to this game i told myself yeah this is the worst of your life so one good thing is worst is over rest of the uh, rest of your life you are not going to lose a game within 19 moves after two tournaments i lose in 16 moves against whom and against you young you know <laughs> again yeah 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 no no not again so the first one was with some other gm ah, some other gm Ni- 19 moves and then i thought okay this is the you know lowest point of my chess career like i am not going to lose within 19 moves and then it came to 16 moves but after that i did not say a single thing i said yeah maybe it will maybe some day i'll lose in 10 moves i'll not i'll not bother better not to think <laughs> <laughs> well so 16 has been the lowest till yeah we we are yet to go lower than that uh yeah no actually 16 is not lowest so the other day i was playing in um, what is it uh, in chess.com yeah? yeah some guy some guy challenges me in some bullet or something So okay, I I accepted the challenge. I played, uh, I think, uh, yeah, e4, uh, e6, uh, d4. The guy plays bishop b4 check. I did not understand. Uh, e4, he plays bishop b4 check. I played c3. It takes bishop into c3. Knight into c3. Plus queen. Uh, oh, so. Um, Yeah, queen h4, knight f3, queen f2, and zero one. Uh, yeah, m- game ended here. Why? I was com- because it turned out I had no idea that in chess.com they have some game which is called three checks. Oh, and it turned out I accepted that challenge, that challenge, and I got mated like this. Yeah, <laughs> in five moves. But I took my revenge with Sandeep on one day. I challenged him in one game, and I did the same with him. Uh, same thing, ah? Huh? So, well, I think I was white, and I did it in four moves or something. And he was like, "What? What just happened, yeah?" <laughs> anyway, 
no connection with the games let's go to the game now uh, see guys i think i i have to tell you subscribe to gang surya's channel for such stories you cannot find them anywhere else until now surya would made, make this rare kind of a visit to chess base india channel and talk about these amazing stories and i would love it and now he started his own channel so i'm so happy uh, that we are going to l- uh, listen to so many such things like preparation in world championship match used somewhere else and then someone refutes it oh my god this is wonderful yeah actually there are two culprits to be blamed for for my initiative one is you and the other one is watching vishnu so you sort of kind of persuaded me to open a channel yeah. and then when vishnu did it i'm like okay if he can do it i'll also do it <laughs> Vishnu sorry Vishnu Vishnu uh, this is this is not not uh, good yeah of yours too you need to make him suffer uh, in your next training session yeah yeah he does that all the time anyways <laughs> so <laughs> all right so let's have a look at the game yeah so smirno uh, anton opened the game with d4 mhm so uh, yeah nimzo this was uh, one thing that uh, that i was playing it's it's very predictable that i'll play nimzo and the moment he played f3 i again there was a moment when i was cursing myself that even if i had 5 minutes to prepare i would have checked only f3 nimzo yeah. because out of all the lines that he played this is the only line where you know it's very the line that i was going to play was uh, a bit forcing and f3 is something that he played few rounds before also so it was nothing unexpected okay and when uh, f3 came on the board i was not very happy that uh, i did not prepare at all i thought okay maybe i could have been little bit more professional and you know spent at least 5 10 minutes on just f3 yeah so so okay, play- so like all like you said uh, curse yourself for a few seconds or a, or a minute or so but then get back you know on the game yeah i mean don't don't make it sound like uh, next time all those viewers you know when they forget their preparation they start looking at their mobile or you know watch and then ah one minute one minute i have to curse myself <laughs> yeah, and now no get back so let's not make any thumb rule for <laughs> like this yeah yeah no thumb rule uh, whatever makes you feel comfortable guys you can you can curse yourself for as long as you want but get back to your game uh, when you when yeah. you're done yeah so so okay see c5 yeah so one good thing about this was uh, this setup i did not play before earlier i think i played only d5 so one thing i was sure that uh, anton would not know that i'll play c5 yeah so c5 i mean he can i cannot be sure it's one of the main line obviously so yeah. d5 and now there's some uh, uh, gambit yeah with b5 yeah e- either way ca- i i think i started with castle but it's pretty much the same okay e4 b5 So e5 all main lines it's like uh, are... blumenfeld and bank uh, banco together yeah like blumenfeld you play b5 lines uh, with e6 and here uh, yeah somehow you mixed but it's a very common uh, no no this is this position i think there are roughly around 200 games sure, and sure. many top players are playing this yes, eh? yes. from white side a big specialist is mamedero who played a lot of games uh, and this line i prepared with hari uh, Uh, we both saw it together we went very deep and uh, there is also i think there is a uh, very important theoretical game uh, between mamaderov and hari krishna which was also part of our preparation and uh, yeah we had tremendous deep notes everything covered everything well analyzed uh, and i have been waiting to play test this line in a tournament game yeah and uh, i just did not know that within like you know seven or eight moves i'll or whatever within first 10 moves i'll simply forget how i am supposed to play okay so he he played e5 which is also the main move knight e8 by the way a shout out to uh, harshal harshal oza for for the super chat thank you harshal yeah let's continue knight e8 so f4 so basically if you look at the position uh, it's very interesting uh white has tremendous control over center f4 e5 d5 c4 and all black has in, at his disposal is time black has been black has castle already so black will try to break the center before white can uh, castle yeah like if you give white uh, one or two moves knight f3 bishop d3 then uh, black might as well resign yeah like position is so bad 
I mean, uh, in terms of you know, like strategically speaking. Sure. So it's all about uh, the moment, the tempo. So I played e d five. So so in that respect, maybe d six also makes some sense, or not really. Yeah, that's that's one of the main move after e d five c d five. So you want to just uh, eliminate uh, this one because he cannot take knight d five. Yes. Now d six. And uh, White plays Knight f3 here. And now White wants to play Bishop d3, so Black plays c4. Uh, I think White plays a4. This is one of the main move here. Uh, threatening a b5, and Black uh, blocks it with uh, with Knight d7. Idea is if you take a b5. Then uh, black takes twice on e5, so d5, f5, knight e5, knight into e5, and then there is queen h4, queen e4, e3, queen e4. So basically, after uh, and, and something after... like this means you'll anyway give a check here or d4 and pick yeah, up yeah. this guy. No, yeah, yeah, you pick up that. Yeah. <clears throat> By the way, this king did. Can I go a little bit off the topic? Yeah, sure. By the way, this king did reminded me of a very uh, interesting, uh, interesting um, plan. Okay. It just it just came to my mind right now. Can you go to starting position once? It has got no connection with the game. I just want to share something. Guys, this is what I'm talking about. Yeah, Surya, thank you for doing this. I wanted you to do it today. I thought no, you'll show two games and that will be the end. But you you are in your storytelling mode. Wonderful news. Okay. So D D four. Yeah. Knight f six. C four. Uh, let me see if I can remember this. Yeah. E five. Oh, okay. D into E five. Knight G four. E four. Knight E five. F four. And now there was this move. Knight B C six. Wow. So. Yeah, there, there there is many refutation, but um, I think I read it somewhere long back in some book or somewhere where uh, John Nunn gives a refutation, which I kind of, uh, which again stayed with stayed in my mind. So that is f into e5, and that's how I remembered it. In h4 check, king d2, very important. Uh, queen f4 check, king c3. <laughs> Queen takes e5 check. King d2. King d2. Okay. Two back. Queen f4 check. King e1 back. Queen h4. Oh. And now g3. What a beautiful <laughs> line. What a beautiful line. <laughs> Guys, please let us know why. Why did black white king? I want. I want my chat. Uh, the viewers to tell me why did the white king. Go from d2 to c3, then come back and then play g3. Why didn't he play g3 at this moment itself? Let's see if if you guys uh, can come up with what what a, what a great example, Surya. What a great example. Yeah. Well, so, so I mean, I just went completely off the topic. But when you when you said king queen h for king d2, this is what came to my mind. Like uh, <laughs> it's a very aesthetically pleasing. No, this Pollution. was not. This was not off topic. This was beautiful. I I don't think you can find such an example uh, aptly shown at that moment anywhere else. It was brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's uh, awake and listening to it very intently. Gaurang, Kushal Chess, Ilam Parthi, Karthik S, Ankit Narayanan. Everyone said Queen E2 is a pin down the E file. So if you play G3 here. Then takes queen e2 means you lose the rook and there's no pin. So what White does is he goes with his king, allows the capture of e5 pawn, comes back and then plays g3. When now you take. Uh, but uh, let me make a confession that I have never checked this with engine. I read it in a book like long back, and uh, yeah, like when I'm seeing it, it makes sense. It's still I I don't see a. Why it why 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 white cannot play like this? Let's keep it prist, pres, uh, let's keep it uh, like you know beautiful pres, pristine without looking at the engine. It's such a nice story. True. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so back in the game. So uh, yeah, this position where uh, d6 ninth move. Yeah. 
So d6, knight f3, c4, a4, knight b7, bishop e2, white, no, not ab5, bishop e2 is the main, one of the main move, and then queen b6. So this is uh, the one of the starting position. Like there are games with, uh, if you click, like if you go to just one move back when black played knight b7, and just press enter here just to see how many games are there. Okay. Yeah, so you see 82 games found, and uh, yeah, you can see Mamader of Hari Krishna, Mamader of Karyakin. I see Harika Bhavasuri. So there are like, uh, it's theoretically very important uh, line, and uh, we analyzed a lot here. Yeah. However, now come back to the position uh, where CD5 happened. So it is at this point, all I could remember was that when white plays knight f3, I have, to, I have to play c4. When white plays bishop e2, I have to play queen b6. Now, I was not sure if the move is d6 or bishop b7. Okay. So like the current position, should I play d6 or bishop b7? Then I know the sequence. Then I know if knight f3, c4, bishop e2, queen b6. And I remember every single detail which starting from move 25. Like, you know, how I have to make draw, all this uh, complex thing, everything I remember. It's like, uh, you know, how to live your old age, but you have to pass through your middle years. Yeah, or yeah, exactly. Or also, let's say, you know how to get to the airport uh, from your house, but you just don't know once you're, you're out of your house, whether you have to take a right turn or left turn. <laughs> but rest you remember, yeah? <laughs> so, it, so it does not matter. So I played Bishop B7. Assuming this is fine, yeah? Okay. And after playing bishop b7, he starts thinking. And I'm like, okay, this is not a good sign. Until now, he was blitzing every move. Hmm. He starts thinking and then I'm like, okay, maybe he is remembering his uh, preparation. Because, okay, bishop b7 is such a normal move, yeah? Yeah. And, and then Anish comes to my board. Hmm. He makes all these faces and he looks at my clock. He looks at me. And I played bishop b7 pretty fast, yeah? Hmm. And he is curiously looking at the position. And when Anish is, you know, curiously looking at the position as if he's seeing this for the first time, it's not a good sign at all. Yeah. Because he has already checked everything. <laughs> so, so I was not at all happy. Especially after when Anish came, I'm like, okay, now I just uh, messed it up. Right. And uh, yeah, he thought for a while. And he played knight f3. I think computer says here uh, bishop takes b5 is most critical. Hmm. But I think this I saw he might queen f5. Yeah. Bishop e, bishop e2. Knight c7 I thought I'll play. Bishop b2. Yeah. And knight and knight takes d5. So uh, yeah, so this is what I was uh, hoping to play and computer thinks this is very critical position. But uh, from a human point of view, I think it's uh, just complicated position. I mean, I don't even care what computer says. Yeah, it's a very messy position. Sure. So in the game, in the game, he played knight f3. I was still trying to pretend that I'm in my preparation, so I played c4 as if everything under control. Yeah. Played bishop e2. I played queen b6. So and uh, believe it or not, actually, black is doing. More than okay here. <laughs> and after his next move, already I'm better. Really? Yeah, I thought maybe he should play something like d6. And I would probably play f6 in this case. You know, uh, if you go back, uh, you know, yeah, where, where he played bishop e2, let's say. c4, bishop e2. Well, again, white will be completely winning if he can castle. His only problem in the position is his king. Right. Queen b6. So this is what we are uh, black is trying to get. And yeah, here I think he uh, overestimated. He played bishop d2. So knight c7. I'm attacking d5. So basically, you didn't remember that actually it's more important to play d6. But in a way, by not remembering it, you act you found a perhaps better line. I will tell you one uh, very interesting uh, thing. Well, go to knight c d5 position. Yeah. Press enter. Out of 140 games, there is only one Bishop Ooh. B7, which is... Uh, only and one? As a, that is me. <laughs> as, a, as a result, 
during closing ceremony both anish and uh, ervin came and they actually thought this is part of uh, some kind of uh, you know anand preparation because anand files this book was also published just before that right right so and since i am playing everybody even anish thought this is some kind of preparation and later i checked with computer it's not so easy to uh, refute uh, this move but uh, the truth is i had absolutely <laughs> no idea what to play i simply forgot well in and general said, when when a person like you has worked for you know anand for three world championship matches when you play a new move i think people do get to uh, get scared yeah like this guy has analyzed it completely yeah and also again this brings me back to vishnu in a way like uh, if everybody would start uh, thinking on its own like imagine if uh, people were not preparing with computer and you give this position to 140 different players do you think out of 140 139 players will play d6 and nobody will play bishop b7 i cannot believe this yeah i think it happens because when you turn on the engine the engine says b6 is the best move right and not bishop b7 so everybody plays b6 but uh, sometimes uh, if you forget it's possible that you play a second best move or something which is not that bad but it can also take uh, your oppor- uh, opponent out of uh, his comfort zone and preparation right right <clears throat> so so yeah bishop b7 knight f3 knight f3 c4, c4. bishop e2 queen b3 from castling which is very important yeah he played bishop d2 here so knight c7 e6 knight e6 yeah so his problem is he cannot castle yeah anywhere yeah. so he played, was, he goes all out here. i was thinking if he could do something like queen c1 with the idea of bishop e3 but i don't know you will just play bishop c5 I'll, yeah, yeah. exactly i'll play bishop c5 yeah i'll just stop it yeah so he plays f5 knight d4 and he plays f6 oh, this is too much yeah he's he's I, overextending a lot with his king in the center yeah and there is nothing nothing happening on the on the king side yeah. like uh, yeah so i played rook e8 so i'm planning to take on f3 and take on e5 this was a very interesting moment of the game so he played a3 and i think i thought for about uh, 35 minutes here mm-hmm. uh the main problem was uh, everything looked overwhelming everything looked winning yeah and uh, for some moment i was uh, again i was fascinated with one particular idea that i desperately wanted to play and uh, i only know how i stopped it Uh, how i stopped myself from not executing this okay so the thing is uh, he played a3 uh because if he doesn't play a3 if he starts with bishop f4 let's say protecting the pawn yeah then i have knight b6 and it's very difficult to save uh, the e5 pawn right so by playing a3 his idea is uh of course black would love to play bishop c5 if he can now he wants to play uh, bishop f4 so knight b c6 and now he wants knight d5 so he unpinned himself wow and knight might even jump in here yeah well i mean b6 queen is hanging yes but most of my 35 minutes went on the following line i wanted to play knight into e5 here <laughs> so he has to take on b6 because otherwise d5 is hanging so knight into b6 is forced yeah so you have to take so knight e f3 check e f3 and a into b6 wow so now right now i have only knight and pawn and i did not see a single way where white can save uh, himself uh like i'm pre- I- I was thinking just, you can you can you start running away like this or doesn't make any sense Rook just take, just take rook into e2 keep it simple He has to take a yeah, knight into e2 and rook e8 check and take bishop into f3 Okay Wait here there is rook e1 yeah, just rook go e1 back one might be a bit irritating Just uh just go back a bit No uh, two moves before when you played king d2 Uh, play bishop 
other than this? Well, I just learned that King D2 is supposed to be a good move, so I just made it, you know, like. Uh, yeah. I, I just, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I think you have to include, uh, yeah, uh, no, take take twice, that is fine. Uh, take, take twice on E2. And I think just include one move, Bishop D4. Ah, okay. You're threatening this. So, and... Yeah. So now, 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 one once the rook is engaged on uh, protecting b2, then you do this rook e8 bishop f3 thing. Or take g f6 or bishop f6. I mean, it's it's here. It is not uh, not that trivial. We are doing quite good here. Sure. Sure. Okay. But the thing is, it is not necessary at all. Computer says this is winning. By the way, this entire uh, this line, yeah, this a b6. Yeah, yeah. This this is winning for black. Tremendous. Uh, by the way, Surya's uh, opponent uh, is uh, Anton Smirnov, young talent from Australia, rated 2600. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so I played Bishop A5. Why didn't Instead you go, of, uh, like, after thinking so much, why didn't you play this? Because uh, one thing was I was asking, so if you go back to the position where he played A3. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so here I was just asking... Looking at the current position, there is no need to, you know, play a line which is hanging by forced moves. Yeah. I thought I should be able to finish him uh, just uh, without getting into any complex complications. Okay. So I played bishop a5 here. Hmm. So this way, okay, now you cannot play bishop f4 because I have uh, knight c6. And there is one thing I had to calculate. Now, this was very important. That if he takes knight into d4 here, so out of 35 minutes, uh, quite a lot of time went here. And now uh, knight into b5. Yeah. Queen into e5. Bishop into a5. Forced. Queen into b5. Forced. Uh, forced, yeah. Like bishop g2 doesn't seem to be doing any good. Yeah. Well, uh, I don't know. I'm, I was thinking if I could go bishop f3 next move, but... Uh, let's say he can play bishop c3 here. No, he'll play rook g1 maybe. Yeah, and then this, and then you take here, I guess. Yeah. And yeah, maybe knight c3 also now. Consolidating, yeah? and you have to watch out for queen c2 kind of thing. Yeah, maybe, yes. It's It looks scary, for sure. So you can take uh, Queen B5, Bishop F5, Queen B5, Bishop C3, and my original calculation here was to play Bishop into G2, Rook G1, Bishop F3, Rook G7, King H8. But problem is he has Rook F7 and Rook F8 checkmate. Oh. So like I can I, I cannot take Bishop E2 because of Rook F8 and F7 is mate. Oh, wow. What a mate. So, so it was very important to spot that after um, yeah, queen b5, bishop c3. There's only one winning move, I think, here. To play queen g5. This was very important to uh, spot. Because now I'm threatening queen into g2. And I, most importantly, I am not uh, letting white escape. Yeah. So, now he will... He cannot... Uh, he cannot castle on the queen side without giving a piece. Yes. Like queen d2, I have rook, uh, queen into g2, and then there is no long castle. And after rook f1, I have bishop f3. Here rook e2, and if rook f1, I have bishop f3. Fantastic. So, yeah. So, th so that's why bishop a5. Uh, once I saw this, then bishop a5 was... Uh, yeah, he, Easy to he play didn't then. take on d4. He played f into g7. Yeah, but, no, but, after but f into uh, g7. monstrous calculations. Yeah, Surya, in, in the game, you, you are doing some amazing calculations. Uh, and and I, I would uh, recommend the viewers to have a look at some of Surya's games to improve your calculation because he's able to calculate such long lines with so many branches with so much accuracy with intuition involved in that sacrifices brilliant brilliant play so fg7 i played uh, knight uh, knight f3 now i want to take the eliminate the central pawn. yeah bishop f3 has to play rook into e5 king f1 
So now talking about this G7 pawn, yeah, it's actually doing a fantastic job. Yeah, I just want want him to have this. I want to have this pawn in my house. Keep him there. Like you know, it's, yeah, keep keep him there. Just don't take it. Uh, so you know, you must have played many bug house. So if if you play bug house, the most dangerous piece now is a knight. Yeah. Yeah. And also in the current scenario, the only dangerous piece for uh, black is knight. This knight should not come to e4 or uh, d5 by at any cost. So that's why I played knight a6 here to make sure that there is no uh, knight e4 or knight d5. Mm -hmm. He played bishop e1. He wants to get his bishop to f2. And I remember we were getting slightly low on time, and I did not want to waste a lot of time. So I made a very safe choice, eliminate that dangerous piece. Nice. nice. Like it, yeah, it was not coming immediately, but now, now I have absolutely no uh, fear for my king anymore. Like nobody can touch it anymore. So basically, if you exchange these two pieces, also this bishop, which will maybe sit on c3, can't do anything because it's his own pawn. Exactly. I mean. Exactly. Exactly. So if now if he takes bishop c3, I have rook f5. So. Yeah. yeah, I'll just play rook f5 and I'll start building my... This knight will one day land to d3 maybe. So in the game, he played bishop f2. Knight c5. Pawn takes c3. Okay, I brought another piece to the game. So rook e8. Played h4. This is, I think, desperation. He doesn't want to attack. He just wants to get rook h3, you know, try to consolidate it somehow, but it's kind of too late. Yeah. Bishop takes f3 here. Queen f3 he took. And queen takes d6. So I'm completely winning. And uh, I kind of like uh, the way it finished. He played h5. There are many ways, but again, this is more definitely the prettiest and also the most direct. So knight d3. Okay. So bishop g3. Okay, I, I I want I want the viewers to solve this uh, final position, the last move of the game, uh, black to move. Of course, black has many ways to win here. Uh, I guess Surya, or or is it only one? No, no, no. I think still there are many, there ways, are many to ways to win. So how did Surya finish off this game? Of course, you should know by now that uh, it's not a very ordinary move. It'll be something special. So <clears throat> black to move. How do you finish it off? <coughs> nice way to finish off the tournament also, yes? This is fine. Yeah, it's very good. Yeah. Oh, yes. Suryan Shwarma is right. And he's put in five exclamation marks. A little bit too much, but your move yeah. is correct. Uh, and also, yeah, Akshay Mohan, Anish Godse, New Patel, Ryan Rajesh, Gaurang B, fantastic. Kushal Chess, Avyaya Bhatt. Yes, queen into a3. Nice move. Yeah, then it's just lost. If you take, it's a mate here. And if you move the rook, then anyway, c3 will hang in. A lot of material. Yeah. Rook e3 is also coming. There are many, too many things happening. Fantastic. Whoa. That was what a game, you know. Story inside a story, story inside a story. And then we finally came to an end. Yeah. It was it was so much fun, Surya. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for doing this. And uh, I must tell the viewers. Let's see how. Uh, right now, guys, Surya's channel has 579 subscribers. So please, I'm going to put the link one more time. All those who haven't subscribed, please do so. You can see the level of his, uh, the way he speaks, the the nice uh, stories he has. Well, you should be listening to them more often to improve your chess level. And we want to make sure that by tonight he reaches 1000 subscribers. So please like his stream. Uh, sorry, subscribe to his channel. And uh, uh, for the last time, Surya, uh, what's the plan for this weekend? If you can tell all the viewers who are just joined in, you know, for the second half. Yeah. Yeah. So the, uh, the first show, um, as I said, I'll be doing at least four episodes with Anand. Probably it will be more where I'll be asking Anand a lot of questions and uh, what I have, I have planned the interviews in such a way uh, that I don't want, uh, 
I don't want to ask Anand some questions that uh, the viewers can anyway YouTube and you know find it anywhere, anywhere else. Because Anand, of course, has, he has given so many interviews that uh, it's very difficult to ask him something new. Exactly, my my point. But, what are you going to ask? Yeah. One one question which is like some completely different, which which has <laughs> never been heard before. <laughs> okay, all right. So um, okay, I'll give away one one. Do you know that one of Anand's chess file is called Rasam? Rasam. <laughs> Because he loves Rasam, so maybe it's his favorite opening. So yeah, so so like this, there will be many many inside things. Wow. You know, stories about our uh, our uh, like when he played the matches. Uh, of course, I was fortunate enough to see him, uh, to work with him for so many years, and uh, to know him as a chess player, to know him as a person. Uh, so there will be lot of uh, lot of questions which uh, which is not available which we don't get to ask and also one more thing i thought that uh, i should ask him questions that uh, uh, that i think uh, many chess players would love to ask yeah you know many problems that we face during the game during a, a tournament but if you google or youtube one you may not uh, you may not find those questions and we'll be seeing the position my first position in the show this is very uh, instructive one that is uh, that is my first chess interaction with anand yes it's a fascinating position it's like uh, this this is again one of the position that always stayed in my mind okay so it's it's from a simultaneous display which he played and after that we analyzed blind wow and that simultaneous play was against deep sen gupta this this has never been published anywhere so nobody knows about the position nobody nobody has seen this before who i'm i'm already so, waiting for for 9 pm on on saturday uh, uh basically it's going to be so much fun and i want to tell viewers that whenever people you know interviewers meet anand they are many times kind of uh, star struck because five time world champion such a big legend of the game but when you have an interviewer like surya who spent nearly a decade with uh, with vishi being his second also you can say his friend uh, it it's just much more interesting you know anand will be more comfortable you'll be asking some very nice questions so it'll be beautiful to see this interaction yeah, yeah also one of the shows uh, will have aruna so together so that will also be quite nice fantastic we can't wait for it guys so <clears throat> make sure that you you subscribe to the channel of surya ganguly and secondly very important surya uh, hails from the state of west bengal uh, which recently had a big big cyclone uh, hit uh, the state called amfan and uh, terrible destruction i just want to to share my uh, screen here for a for a second with with all of you to just show you what we are doing here this is the tournament that we are organizing let's rebuild west bengal together uh, and basically 13 uh, masters two will be giving live shows like surya and uh, the bendu barua but 11 others will be doing a simul simultaneous exhibition so that we can raise funds and they are um, the Barua and Ganguly are doing the live shows there is Diptayan Ghosh Deep Sen Gupta Nilotpal Das Saptarshi Roy Nisha Mohota Argyadeep Das Sayantan Das Bitan Banerjee wow so many strong players from West Bengal Somak Palit uh, Neeraj Kumar Mishra Suvrajit Saha and the tournament is held uh, there's a blitz tournament held on Saturday at 7 pm 9 uh, rounds and there's also a simul on sunday against these players you will get randomly paired against one of the titled players to play uh, and you need to pay over here 150 rupees for the blitz tournament 500 rupees for the uh, simul and uh, the links are in the description so please do take part uh, and you know we will be donating all the amount to cry which is a foundation and you can see that how they are going to make use of each and every rupee has been properly mentioned here like household dry ration there's also pulses oil sugar transportation so many other things have been mentioned meticulously so i request all of you to please 
donate to this good cause and let's rebuild west bengal together surya sorry for that uh, long uh, speech of mine uh, no it's fine it's fine i i just want wanted people to know about this initiative that that we are doing. absolutely yeah good i'm so glad we did this today surya uh, i hope that now that you have started your channel uh we can we will we'll be able to do some more collaborations or or something more interesting stuff uh which which will be very useful to the chess community sure sure i just hope that i did not ruin your show because you were doing opening series and now all your students will say okay let's forget this <laughs> yeah no it's <laughs> like uh, you sh- they all should remember what i'm teaching but just in case you forget what I, what was taught to you then this show that surya did today will come to come in handy uh, once again surya thanks and uh, i'll see you on on saturday for your live show and uh, thank you for joining in today yeah thanks sagar and once you are done please uh, teach me some technical details yeah once you are free yeah i'm just going I still to have to i'm just going to stop this stream and you can stay on the call and we'll continue from there awesome awesome okay guys Yeah. Uh, in the chat see you oh nice people have actually surya you you should just uh, give a shout out to all the viewers you have reached 696 subscribers so i'm sure you will reach 1000 by hey, tonight wow. thank you guys <laughs> thank you okay so guys thank you chat thank you so much for doing this uh, a big uh, round of applause to all of you and uh, i'll see you again tomorrow morning with the comedians in the afternoon with the opening series this goes on uh, and we will be be in touch see you bye